A weekend wildfire on Long Island, New York, burned hundreds of acres in the Pine Barrens. The police now say it was likely started accidentally by someone making s'mores in the backyard. Wildfires in this country are expected to grow in number and intensity because of climate change. For tonight's Eye in America, Carter Evans visited a special fire lab doing cutting edge research into so-called megafires. Tucked beneath Missoula, Montana's snow-capped mountains, there's a laboratory unlike any other in the country where scientists are starting fires to better understand how they burn and how to manage them. Look at this uh, fire tornado phenomena. We watched mechanical engineer Jason Forthoffer replicate a fire NATO. You get these super strong winds in there, just all naturally driven by the fire. Are these indicative of more extreme fire behavior? Absolutely. As that increases, I think we should expect to see more of these fire tornadoes. Looks like the flaming front of a fire coming through. Exactly. That's the intent. Fire scientist and lab leader Mark Finney showed us this burn table to demonstrate how circulating air can impact a hillside fire. It's drawing it up the slope. It's drawing it up the slope. And so this is one of the reasons why it's so dangerous to be upslope of a spreading fire. The U.S. Forest Service built the Fire Sciences Lab in 1960, inspired by a forest fire that killed 13 firefighters. Today, about 80 employees are carrying on that mission of wildfire research, and they keep coming back to one controlling principle. We're part of the problem. We're definitely part of the problem. Finney believes we still don't implement some of the basics, like clearing dry vegetation with more prescribed burns, including near urban areas, and letting some smaller wildland fires burn to eliminate fuels that could feed larger fires. The harder we fight fire, the harder we try to remove fire, the more the fuels build up in a given location. We've actually created conditions that make those fires worse. This lab allows the uncontrollable to be controlled and studied. Finney took us to a silo where his team assembled dry logs and lit them on fire to simulate wind-fueled flames on the forest floor. It's creating its own weather in that it's sucking air in. It is sucking air in. And what they're learning here has never been more important, following a slew of massive wildfires, including ones that recently destroyed thousands of homes in Los Angeles. California's governor's office called the fires unprecedented. Is it really that unprecedented? I don't think so. It's the same fire events over and over again. And yet decades go by and, and those, those lessons and those, those impacts are often forgotten. He hopes what they learn from studying the flames can change the way we approach wildfires. How do you convince a community that lighting a fire near their homes is a good idea? It, the question is, what risks do you want? To experience the very low risk of having problems with prescribed burning, or do you want to basically roll the dice and just wait till circumstances overwhelm uh, emergency response? Let's get out, let's go. We've proven that we can't eliminate fire. The only choices we really have are when to have it and what kind to have. And that will require a change in perspective, looking at fire as an ally, not an enemy. For I in America, I'm Carter Evans in Missoula, Montana.